When God created hunting, he created amazing landscapes in which to do it. The Austrian Alps are among the best. Just below these slopes sits the Swarovski Optics Factory. And when these mountains dominate your view, how could you not be inspired to design scopes and binos with this terrain in mind? The ultimate creation is the rangefinding DS. Launched in 2017, it took the market by storm. Actually, we underestimated the market in that case. We were aware that uh, with the digital intelligence of the product, we will hit the hunter's need, but that it's that big, uh, we haven't been aware. It sold so quickly, they didn't even send one to Swarovski pro stalker Darren Fizz Fizakali. I think we're going to burn a few calories today, David. <laughs> he has not used a DS, and nor has he stalked or tasted the iconic animal from these mountains, the chamois. That is all about to change. So we're here at Swarovski to pick up a rifle and scope, and then we're heading up there. I've never done it, but I guess the closest thing I could guess it's going to be like will be open hill in Scotland but you look at the environment out there and whether we get something or not doesn't matter it's just being out there and I'm going to find it fascinating to see what the um, professional hunter can tell us about that environment um, and about the quarry as well because again never shot chamois so yeah very excited. Sorry, 2,000 meters here saying that the top up there is about 2,350 the incredible landscape. Much of the main factory floor is off limits during our stay, but we do get a chance to test the rifle, a Steyr Mannlicher in 270 on the smartest, greenest range we've ever been to. It measures the distance, the shooting angle, temperature, the air pressure, also the magnification. And the only thing the hunter has to do, press the button, and it will show the automatic um, aiming point and it fully can concentrate on the hunting situation. Flashing yeah. in green. And there's an... You will hit where you aim, but of course you have to take care where the heart is. So you should aim a bit lower, even at a very close distance. This is an extraordinary piece of kit and setting it up correctly is crucial. You need to chronograph your rifle. The most of the barrels sold today are a bit shorter than the barrels where the ammunition producers measure their velocity and the better the data the more precise the result will be. With everything working in harmony we're off to climb some slopes with an Austrian mountain man. Albert has worked as a professional hunter for Swarovski for decades. He's hunted this area, man and boy, and we're hoping he's feeling generous. Do you carry or me? You. Okay. You are shooting, you carry. I carry it. Okay, <laughs> fine. <laughs> we need to get these things straight. <laughs> Fantastic. It's got them there. Need a stick. It's a long time since I've done that. Preparation for this type of hunting is key, but you can't help doubting your abilities as Albert sets off at pace. It's not long before we spot our first chamois. We quickly realise that selection is going to be a big part of today. So I was saying 30 per season. The season's four and a half months from beginning of August to the middle of December. And the area 
is about 3,000 acres. So that equates to one per 100 acres, which is pretty you know, Compared to what we're doing back in the southeast of England with our deer management, that's more like one per acre. So, a hundred times more intense what we're doing. Also the density, proves that the density um, of animals is, is obviously, it uh, puts it into perspective. There's some pretty incredible about the kind of grandeur of this place, but also as they coupled with the sensitivity of how they manage the chamois. It's um, really considered and it's obviously super selective. We've seen probably 50 chamois so far this morning and nothing so far has been what he wants, which is great. I mean, I'd rather be out here all day looking for that one that needs taking out rather than something that's borderline. Um, so yeah, interesting, interesting guy. Really is a, a man of the mountains. That better go, David. He's gone out of sight. <laughs> What also becomes apparent is that these wild animals are not that worried about us. Though quiet now, these mountain passes are popular with walkers. Does he want some food? <laughs> However, no doubt that when we do see the perfect animal, it will be 300 yards away and running. Albert, so these chamois here, they seem very relaxed. Is this because this area, there's so many mountain they walkers? Know, they know the hikers. I see. Yes. They become very familiar. Yeah. You can also tell they're not under very much pressure. All, the most of them, the most females with kids. Yeah, these ones. They're literally about 150 meters up the hill. And um, grazing away. Not what you get in Scotland. No, it's a bit different. They do seem really relaxed and you can tell they're under very little pressure, certainly hunting pressure. And like Albert's saying, obviously, see a lot of hikers, huge, I mean, all these trails look really well trodden. The weather and terrain change and the chamois seek cover in the short spruce shrub. Areas that are normal hotspots are deserted. 100, wow. He just said that normally in this area, about 100 in one group. Um, I've seen a huge number, way more than I expected to see. I reckon we've now seen 70, 80 chamois this morning. Now the hope was that we'd be shooting, cooking and tasting our own chamois on this trip. But as there are no guarantees, we've done that already. So I was really keen to see where the chamois that are shot in this area end up. So we've come here, which is Gut Loitesh, which is a really well-respected and well-renowned butchery in the area. This is the Loitesh Valley. Here they do everything in-house. They do the butchery, they do the salami making, the sausage making, smoking, everything. They have a farm shop. The products go upstairs, they're sold to the general public. But because this time of year particularly, they were saying that um, they will have a lot of game coming in on a weekly basis. So there's more than they can sell through the shop and the rest of it all goes into like mountain restaurants, tourists buying it up in mountain cabins, etc. So yeah, really keen to um, go and sample some of their products. This smokery, cafe and game meat and hunt supporting establishment is about 40 minutes from the factory and has Swarovski family connections. They have a few chamois in the chiller and are expertly butchering a red stag. So one thing that's quite interesting is that they're hanging the carcasses from their front leg. There's a, in the UK, we basically, with the gambrels, hang everything on the back legs. But um, he said there's no, there's no reason, it's not um, to do with the kind of meat or anything, it's just purely a, a traditional thing that they do, that the hunters always hang from the front leg. In the window is an invitation to an open day where hunters will meet and greet the general public. Just picked up this leaflet here in the shop. This is basically a one-day event uh, which the local hunting community are putting on in Innsbruck. I think hunting is generally more accepted um, culturally here, but they're still obviously going out their way to try and keep a you know kind of a dialogue going with the with the public, giving them the opportunity to come and talk to them on the day. Um, so I think that's really really positive. 
There are plenty of meats on offer, but what happens if the need for meat strikes out of hours? Meet the meat vendor. Not only can you get red bull and fanta here, but you can get red deer, salami, smoked trout, game bratwurst. This really is a first. I've never, I've never come across one of these. Maybe there's an idea there. It would be helpful too if this mountain would dispense some meat. Albert hadn't realised we only had a day with him, so turns up the heat. He's desperate to find an animal for us and takes us off piste. It's tough going and it tests Fizz's hill fitness. Keeping him dry is the new Red Kettle Organic Ventile Jacket. It seems appropriate considering this pristine environment and Swarovski's own efforts to develop their green credentials. Unfortunately, we're getting a bit unlucky with the weather. It's absolutely tipping down. But, um, putting my new red kettle jacket to the test, um, which is Christian's new model, which is made with an organic mentol. Um, and although it is completely wet, I'm still completely dry inside. Um, yeah. So it's holding up pretty well. Yeah, it's gone like cardboard, and the water's just running off it. So um, that's what it swells and then blocks. Exactly, it's really it's a really fine weave, and when the cotton swells, it just blocks it up. It's basically like a organic Gore-Tex of sorts, I suppose. Natural fibre. But yeah, so far so good. If anything changes, I'll let you know. At the end of the hunt, Christian. <laughs> After a long day, Austria hasn't disappointed. Fizz has shot hundreds of animals in his time as a professional deer manager, so pulling the trigger is not a priority. Breathing this all in and learning about a new environment and animal is. We're back. We're back. We're back. Uh, it's been a long day. So we've been out for eight hours. Um, Albert thinks we've done about 20 kilometers across some seriously rugged ground. Um, and we've seen certainly at least 150, if not more, chamois, um, but not a single one that's fit the bill. Um, and in a way, really, you know, hats off to Albert for not feeling under any kind of pressure and not, uh, you know, not allowing us to shoot anything other than one that, if we'd come along, I found that had been um, perfect. Um, he's obviously got a massive amount of respect for the animals, but also has a you know, really, really high standard um, as a professional hunter. And regardless of not getting one, you know, it's been an amazing day out. We've seen a huge number of chamois, we've seen loads of different wildlife. Um, it's been a great day. For more information about the DS Rifle Scope and the rest of the Swarovski hunting range, go to swarovskioptic.com.